Welcome to Gather Geeks by BizBash. I'm David Adler, and before we start, I want to introduce you to one of our fantastic sponsors, Skipster. They are the guest management platform used by top event teams for everything from guest lists to seating charts and online invitations. If you're looking for the next generation event software that helps deliver the perfect guest experience, head over to Skipster's website. It's spelled Z K I P S T E R dot com to try a free event. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and Editor-in-Chief Beth Kormanick. Welcome to Gather Geeks. David Adler is away this week. Our guest is Jess Gordon, owner and creative director of the event design and production company, Jess Gordon Proper Fun. She's a self-described rock star, and we happen to agree, not just because of her always inventive design, but the thinking that goes into it. Jess is based in New York and works on events all over the world for corporate and social clients. We're welcoming her back to Gather Geeks. Last year when she spoke with us, we talked about the care and maintenance of clients, initial conversations how to break through emotional walls and get them to open up and defining specific event goals. Today, we're going to talk about how she masterminds an event design to create a stellar first impression. With Jess, she truly is thinking through the guest experience and says the first impression is everything. Here, she shares some specific strategies she uses to set the perfect tone and manipulate it if things start to go awry. So let's get to it. I want to know what your theory is on that first impression when a guest walks into one of your events, what are they supposed to think like? What are they supposed to feel? What are they, what is your thinking on all this? Wow. I think there's so many different things that happen um, that it takes a moment for the emotional dust to settle, so to say. Um, We luckily, I have to say on a whole, we have incredible reactions. The ones that we all strive for where, you know, a client walks in and they burst into tears or they're just, their mouth is open and there's times that you don't know what they're thinking. You're like, is this good? Is this bad? (laughs) Um, But I do think that when you work with a client and you work on a concept, sometimes for a year or more, and they walk into the reality, they almost go into shock. And it's almost like jumping into a very cold pool and you want to be in there but you, you're, you're feeling so many things at once, you almost cannot even move forward emotionally. So I've noticed with a lot of my clients, especially ones that we've worked together with for a long time, they go into like a joyful shock. And then what we often do is I love to walk them around, kind of give them a tour of every detail. And then the initial reaction kind of permeates and spreads across their face and their emotions and therefore like into the ambiance on in the room and it's it's kind of a beautiful sight to behold. So what what do you do? What do you do? What keeps me in this business? What do you do when um like how do you when do you have the client show up? Like if they come and they want to see how it goes during the day, do you sort of tell them don't come? Oh yeah, we're actually very strict about that. Um because I think I think it behooves us to keep the client away. Um, what happens is a lot of times these days, especially with corporate events, they want to be on site watching everything get created. Number one, they're responsible for it. So there's some job fear in there, which I completely understand. Um, but there's also the temptation to micromanage or to get involved. And so we do actually have in our contracts that the client is not really allowed on site until we're 75% done. Um, the reason being that if God forbid we have to change something, we're still able to save it up to a certain point. Um, but also they're seeing it so farly, you know, kind of completed that they can understand that it's going to go great. Um, that is a very precious kind of moment where you are telling clients they can't be at their own party until, until we feel that they should, that they should come. And when, when, how do you know 75%? That's an arbitrary. Is it like, you know, when you know it, it just that you just don't want them. It's not like calculated. <laughs> Actually, it, it kind of is calculated is? perversely in my twisted little mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I do is I kind of do 
all of the solid pieces that I'm absolutely positive about. And if I have any misgivings about any elements or if the client has expressed any on-the-fence moments about certain design elements, I leave those for that last 25% um, because I want to make sure that I can show them the direction that we're going and if it's affirmative and good to go. So I do kind of manipulate it where I usually feel, you know, 95% at least, you know, completely concretely sure of everything that we're doing in the room. But sometimes there's last minute um, additions and things like that. I will leave those off to the side and literally create them while the client is there to ensure that it's perfect. So have you had clients from hell that don't want to like abide by that rule? Is that, is there a reason for that rule? (laughs) Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Listen, clients want to be there all day. I mean, (laughs) the good news is, is, you know, most of the time they're busy with other things. So like, you know, we'll work very closely, let's say like L'Oreal Paris, they're off doing media interviews all day, you know, the day of their event. And, and actually sometimes they're even late and they don't even get to see the room before the event starts. And I get bummed about that because that's the other end of the spectrum where they're walking in and the party is in full swing and they didn't get to see it in its perfection, but we take photos to show them. But, um, you know, most of the time, a lot of clients are pretty busy and with weddings, yeah. you know, they're getting their hair and makeup done and right, right. You know, sometimes they're on site, you know, so you're kind of keeping them away. And the element of surprise is a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, it, it, it shouldn't be something to be scared of. Right. So let's go, let's go to the guest side. Okay. When the guest arrives, what is your strategy about the guest experience on first impression? And what is your so, roller coaster ride as Todd Fiscus says? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, what happens is especially if you're doing like an adjacent cocktail hour, there's always those stragglers that are trying to get in and see the room or, you know, if they're up in a mezzanine for cocktail, they're trying to look down, you know, behind a curtain, you know, down into the main ballroom, things like that. We actually keep the room dark until the guests are literally walking in. So we turn on the lights in different areas and showcase all, all the focal points. Um, not all at once, you know, indefinitely, in because we almost kind of want to show them in little pieces. So they're, it's, it's like a Broadway show where the spotlight is on something and then it goes on to something else and then the entire room is lit up. So we try to kind of bring them through a visual tour through lighting cues to get the full access to the room and, and, you know, the full impact of the beauty of the room. So you really do. The, the idea that the first impression is really important is something that you... It's everything. It's everything. Okay. It's so everything. Go into that. Yeah. Why do you think that? What about well, the brain? Well, the last so impression, that? they're too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they don't give a shit. Um, the first impression, to me, particularly if it evokes an emotional response, is one that will stay with them long after the event. The last impression... The room sometimes has been trashed, you know, it's been used or right. their mind has altered quite a bit. Um, that first impression is this empty moment where it's this relationship between the room, the design, and the guests. And it's a very intimate relationship. And as the evening goes on, it's not intimate anymore. So it's, it's the one that hits the deepest, you know, part of the heart, I feel. So that's where it stays. The memory stays in there. And the first impression is everything. Planning an event and wondering how you can give your attendees the best experience possible? Take advantage of customized meetings with Hilton that make it easier than ever to incorporate health, wellness, and great breaks. Hilton will help you build an extraordinary meeting that attendees will remember. To book your next meeting or event, go to meetings.hilton.com. Is the first impression the long-lasting impression? No, I think you have to manipulate the room so impressions happen throughout the night. Okay. Um, I do believe in keeping certain things dark uh, even throughout the course of an evening, you know, where maybe, maybe let's say if they're having incredibly designed, gorgeous food stations, those are dark until they open, you know, and then if they're getting dessert or something again and then relit again as something new. Um, I think that lighting cause, causes like a theatrical rhythm to mm-hmm. the room mm-hmm. and you can manipulate those impressions over and over again. So the guests are having them throughout the evening. 
And and how do you? Uh, is an impression visual? Is an impression using all the senses? Oh, no, how no. do you? How it's do you? Be... How do you connect them all? Oh, it's got to be through the five senses at all times. So, you know, my feeling is it's the music, you know, no pun intended, has to harmonize with the lighting cue and the food has to change when, when that's happening. Even the smells in the room, even, you know, the textures, maybe the staging changes, a set changes, um, a backdrop goes from velvet to concrete or wood or something like that. It's, these very subtle nuances manipulated through the five senses that I think keeps people engaged. I mean, I am such an ADD person that even when I go to the theater, you know, if there's not a set change within every three minutes, I lose interest. Um, whether there's a big musical moment that can keep me maybe, but it's all working together. Um, and bouncing off of each other to create like this intricate, like back and forth, almost like a, you know, um, like a tic-tac-toe kind of thing, you know what I mean? It's got all connect from different angles. All those senses need to do that. They need to, it's like a laser beam of all of them coming together. And how do you, how, how tightly scripted are, is, is this, um, this, this roadmap? I think we all start out with a tight script, but then what happens is it's so important to watch and observe the guest experience. And sometimes you need to change that script, you know, based upon how they're vibing, because I don't want to manipulate the guests into having a good time. I want them to have a good time. And if they are stalling on something beautiful because they love it and they can't get enough of this cool, maybe lit from within cube with a dancer, you know, that's massive, don't take them away from it. Let them ponder on it for a while and enjoy it. And maybe you scratch something else. I mean, my theory is, is this isn't going to be the last party that anybody ever goes to. So you can save some of the good stuff for like another one. Um, if they're having a great time, let it pause. Uh, I think it's a beautiful thing to work with organic rhythm and not manipulate it too much. Obviously, if you have a run of show, you have speeches, presentations, you have to stick to that. But all of the beautiful cacophony around it can kind of be ad-libbed. But do you, as a an event producer, are you? I've asked everyone this uh, that I've, I've I've interviewed about how mm-hmm. active you are on scene to make changes on the fly, and, and and is it critical to be when you're an event producer to really be producing by the moment? It is the most essential role that I play. Oh, I can design the shit out of a space. If I do not choreograph it as the people are in the room, then I'm not doing my job. To me, that design, that concept, that ambiance falls dead. If we don't can constantly toggle it, shake it, roll it, that is what ambiance is. It has to be an ever-evolving and ever-moving situation. Um, so if I'm not there with my team doing that, I feel like you've almost left your favorite souffle in the oven just to die. That's You've never, you, you're not even taking it out and making sure that it's okay. You just left it in there. And what does the orchestration Done. look like? Does it look like you on headsets telling other people you're feeling it and then transmitting the information to say, do this like, a, like you're in a, a director's in a uh, control room or is it you're on the scene? Like what do you physically are looking for? And what do you do? Yes, so um, I call our team the crickets. So we are constantly moving around the room from every angle, from up above, from behind the stage, looking out, um, on the floor. I mean, we don't want to distract the guests. But so what I've done is I've bought everybody on my team Apple Watches. <laughs> and this this way, usually what we find is the radios are a little bit of a distraction because if there's a loud band or something, we can't really hear anyway. So we've been practicing texting everything on our Apple Watches. So I can be maybe stage left, and I can text Kate. I see at table 10 in my, in my vision, you know, in my sight line, that such and such at 10 o'clock, you know, the woman sitting at 10 o'clock at the, at the table is looking for a waiter or has just spilled something, or the candle has gone out, or she's, I'm noticing at table five, everybody's on their iPhones, they're bored. Um, so we constantly circulate the room from the inside out, and we text each other, 
and we kind of go that way, and it's actually really, really cool. We're looking for lulls in the room, and we're looking to jack them up. Some of the lulls are welcome. Sometimes people need a break. I get it. You know, they want to go out to the lounge or something. I'm not going to manipulate that. But if there's a part of the room that just seems darker or just un, you know, jovial, <laughs> then we kind of all text each other and be like, hey, we noticed there's a dark spot here. What can we do? And what do you do? Well, it depends if there's, uh, if there's roaming entertainment. We uh-huh. have them go over there. You know, we'll gently kind of guide them to maybe hit a certain part of the room that's dead. Um, maybe the lighting will change. Maybe there's a cool color and it needs to be a warm color. Sometimes people feel less inhibited in warm, sexier tones versus cool tones. Um, again, it is all about the five senses. Maybe all their plates are done and they need something to eat. You know, maybe they need drinks. <laughs> maybe they, you know, it just really depends. You know, it's almost like taking care of a baby. What does it need at that exact moment? Does it need to be played with? Does it need to take a nap? Does it need to eat? Um, that's what an event is. You're, you're constantly coddling it and taking care of its needs. And it's kind of great because unlike a baby, you know, it never grows up, but it goes home. <laughs> and then you're on to the so, next one. <laughs> so, so it's interesting, though. So you, so you have the incredible first impression. But then what happens if they're bored or something, the, the, the impression that happens based on a problem could overshadow anything that you've done. Yeah. And, and do you worry about that? Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people in my business say, you're only as good as your last event. I think it's much more intricate than that. You're only as good as your very last moment. Mm. I think it's, harder than people understand. It's not just about the overall event. It's as the people are leaving and even the hype afterwards, you know, what, how do you keep remembering the event many weeks after we've actually gone to taking larger events and breaking them up into smaller events that are spread out over a longer period of time. So we can take maybe a portion, maybe a panel discussion or something and having it somewhere else at a different location, but based on the same concept and the same need, just so people's attention span kind of, you know, spreads out like butter a little bit longer to keep that impression. Interesting. Are there, are there any things that you do now at the end of an event to ensure that the last memory is a good memory? Like things that... that I mean, move? I think at the end of the day, personalization is everything. Um, I think just depending, and there's so many different scenarios, um, but it's funny that you mentioned that you were talking to Todd Fiscus because I was lucky enough to actually go to Todd's wedding, and he had a guest book that was specially made where everybody signed a page of an illustration of them. It was really cool. So you look through this book, and it was huge, and all of a sudden you see this beautiful drawing of you. And you wrote your message there. Wow. Um, this was something that I think people revisited all throughout the night. I think that there's so many different scenarios in terms of corporate, in terms of social events. Um, it's very important to somehow personalize your guests' experiences. And it could be something as simple as like giving them a, a beautiful little gift bag of macaroons, but their name has to be on it letting them know that you took the time to know each and every person's name at that event is very important, uh, particularly like in corporate. I do think, too, if you have entertainment, educating your entertainment on a lot of people in the room, maybe, maybe not each person, but like groups of people. If there's a table that's from Boston, let that entertainment person know that they can call them out. People, we are narcissists. We want to know that we're the most special people in the room, even if there's a thousand of us. You have to come up way, with ways to do that. And it's very difficult, very. Um, but I think there's an art to it, and I think it's an important thing to get in practice of doing. First impressions matter at special events, from opening a beautiful invitation to a fast and friendly check-in at the door. Everything your guests experience makes a difference. Skipster is the event software that is built for creating first impressions that last. Visit their website at zkipster.com to try it out. 
That's Z-K-I-P-S-T-E-R, Skipster, to try it out. Is this trend towards personalization something that's new, or it's always been there, but you're now able to act, act on it more easily? Or understand I think things it. have gotten easier, you know, because of technology. You know, you can hashtag an event. You can Instagram, you know, it a hundred years after the event. Back in the day, I think it happened organically. I think taking that time, uh, which we kind of don't have now, perversely enough because of technology, <laughs> kind of seals our time a little bit, um, but takes care of a lot of our duties. I think that personalization can be wider spread these days because of social media, because of technology. Whereas, you know, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Big Night, one of my favorite movies in the world, about this incredible small dinner party, um, these two brothers trying to save their restaurant, and they wanted to throw the best dinner party in the world to show how incredible their restaurant was and to hopefully save the business. And it was such a beautiful, intimate evening um, being able to express how talented they were to this group of people and then make each person there feel special. Now, that's on a very small scale. I think there were 25 people at this party. It's so important to bring that same aspect into larger events somehow. <clears throat> I also like the idea of diversity and eclecticness. So maybe not every table is the same. Maybe you create, even if there's 30 tables, maybe they're all different. And they have little details of the guests that are actually sitting at those tables. I know it's hard, but, you know, maybe there's a base that's consistent or there's a common denominator, such as a linen. But maybe the items, you know, change just a little bit on each table to really express who the ten people are at that table. That's going to cause an incredible lasting impression. Well, I mean, it seems it makes sense because, you know, we're all going to lots of events and how do you distinguish one from the next as a guest? I mean, the competition for our impression seems to be fierce. The secret is the people. Yep. Your guests are also your gift. So if you know who's in your room, if you know your demographic, that's your recipe right there. I don't think it even has to do with some of the bigger stuff, like the entertainment and, you know, it's all important. But I think if you really take the time to understand who your guest list is, that is the secret ingredient in your recipe for a very successful, long-lasting impression at your event. Because you can manipulate little details about them and place it into the five senses. There could be somebody at the table it just happens to love lemon cookies. You know, how difficult is it to just simply go ahead and say, you know, put a, a petty four kind of, you know, uh, structure down with lemon and say, hey, Lisa, we thought you'd love these and want to share them with the rest of your table. Mm. It's incredible. These are the beautiful little luxury details that I feel like we, a lot of us don't have time to produce, yep. but we need to make the time. Yep. We really do. Um, go, if, and from an impression perspective and, and this discussion, I have noticed that the art of hosting has become a lost uh -huh. art. How do mm -hmm. you train your, your hosts and your organizers to be the gracious person that thinks about all these details? It's so interesting because I think they're all connected. Um, taking that special care and time to get to know who your guests are makes you the ultimate host. Mm -hmm. And then kind of feeding in to maybe some of the really cool, I always say, I, it's like a little bit of, um, of an activity. Uh, give me three words that describe a group of people coming to your event or each person if it's small. I just want three adjectives or verbs or whatever, and that will help me paint a really inclusive and interactive experience and therefore make you a hero as a host. Again, it's taking the time to know who you're hosting right. and expressing that somehow. Right, right. Um, easier said than done, oh, I know. Totally, totally. <laughs> so uh, this is a fascinating discussion. What I want to end on is... I've been doing this sort of game with people. We talk about first impressions. So I say a word and you say what first comes to mind. And um, it's a fun way to sort of, and it's interesting to see 
how people react to different things. If I say the word wedding, what do you think? Love. Okay. Very, very, very good. <laughs> when I say the word New York, what comes to mind? Love. Love? I'm okay. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I say the word event planning, what comes to mind? Logistics. Okay. <laughs> when I say the word Jess Gordon, what do you think people think about when they see you? Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I think of you. <laughs> but yeah, you know what's so funny, and that is that's another thing that a point I want to make because the real Jess Gordon, yeah, there's parts of me that I definitely feel, I definitely do kind of contribute rock star out into the world, but I think taking the time to know maybe the other parts of Jess Gordon Mm -hmm. would be even a better way to host if I was going somewhere. Yep. yep. If that makes sense. Oh no, I totally To maybe not take the obvious, you know, maybe for weddings, maybe it shouldn't be love. Maybe it should be fear or vulnerability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think that taking the first words that come to mind and then maybe doing the opposite might be the ticket. That's absolutely one of the best lessons of this exercise. It's just really interesting that that events are the new town squares in the world, and we've got a responsibility to make the time that people are spending together productive in some way. Um, Exactly. So it's, uh, And I think you're one of the greatest practitioners of that that I know. So... um, I thank you for being on our show. And um, if you can just let people know how to get in touch with you if they want to uh, get rock star quality event organizing and producing. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's just not on the bathroom wall anymore. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's uh, JessGordon.com uh, with one S only. And it's info at JessGordon.com. And then um, I really do live my true life on Instagram at JessGordon. And it's been one of my favorite ways to communicate with people and express who I really am. And I just love it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks, Jess. This has been great. Thanks a lot, David. There you have it from Jess. Some insights that were key for me were her observation that a client's first impression can be different from a guest's first impression and the ways she manages her client's first impression and gives room for adjustments. I think most planners have been with that client who is never going to be satisfied on first look or someone who only feels good after tweaking something and Jess builds that into her process. She also nails it about personalizing events. It's the trend we don't see going away and it's up to every event designer to figure out how to do it. Uh, At BizBash, we recently featured a Toronto gala designed by McNabb Roik Events uh, to benefit the Ontario Veterinary College. For the place settings, each table purchaser or sponsor submitted a photo of their pets, which then served as the table card menu. Think about what a lovely surprise that was for those VIPs. Jess joined us at BizBash Live Los Angeles last year and spoke about marijuana at events in the wake of its legalization. As more areas legalize it, looking at you Canada listeners, there's a lot for event planners to know. So find stories about that in our show notes. So here's where David usually asks me, what's going on at BizBash? Well... Many of you are planning holiday parties right now, and we recently posted the web version of our holiday party feature from the fall magazine, and it's a great resource for those of you who want to try something different. Style editor Michelle Lofik gives you three concepts, merry mindfulness, which is thinking of charitable activities and sustainable stuff, a bon voyage bash for a destination celebration, and fresh start for a wellness-themed holiday party to take place in January and ideas with catering, decor, rentals, gifts, and venues to pull it all off. So check that out on bizbash.com. Before we close, I wanted to thank our podcast producer, Dave Nelson, Claire Hoffman, who manages the editorial aspects of the podcast, and Rebecca Pappas, who manages distribution and audience acquisition. Thanks for joining us on Gather Geeks and Gather On. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a reading and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you'll join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. 
So when's the big event? Hilton's here for planners with their exclusive customized meetings. Become a wow maker and save time by letting Hilton help you present an extraordinary event, one that leads to memorable and meaningful connections. Visit meetings.hilton.com and let Hilton help you.